You're watching your daily dose of YouTube videos when all of a sudden you see something on your home page. Wait, 3i slash Atlas? The fastest interstellar object ever? Entered our solar system? It was an asteroid two times bigger than the one that struck the dinosaur 65 million years ago. What if it actually hits us? Great question, Kyle. If that were to happen, then we'd all die. We'd have global fireballs, tsunamis, a nuclear winter, and the few who do survive stop. But fortunately, we missed that event. However, did you know that there are even more insane astronomical events waiting to happen, including Mars getting its own rings, and a star that gets so close to the solar system, it might destroy it. Yes, all of these things are very likely to happen, and although you might miss them, we're going to travel forward in time to experience them anyway. Walk into your closet, Kyle. I made it into a time machine. We're about to go 10,000 years into the future. Wow, what the f*** is going on? Why is everything shaking so much? Well, you see, Kyle, within the next 20,000 years, Earth will face one of its most violent natural disasters. A supervolcano eruption. Yellowstone, sitting quietly under Wyoming, is one of just 20 known supervolcanoes on the planet, each capable of ejecting more than thousands of kilometers of magma and ash, instantly frying humans. This will be the Earth's crust itself cracking open, similarly to when I forgot to put Vaseline on my lips. If Yellowstone erupts, the surrounding states of Idaho, Montana, and of course Wyoming, would be instantly consumed by what's called pyroclastic flows of lava, racing faster than cars on a highway and destroying everything in its path. Ash would blanket over 800 kilometers in every direction, collapsing buildings, poisoning water, and suffocating crops. The shockwave alone would be felt around the world. Globally, temperatures would plunge as the atmosphere fills with ash and sulfur, triggering years of volcanic winter. On average, events like this happen once every 17,000 years. That means we're due. But you will never see it. Most likely. When the day comes when the Earth itself rips itself apart and resets the planet's surface, you'll be nothing more than a distant history. Your name? Forgotten. I mean, wait, what even is your last name? Smith? Williams? It's Kyle Dave? Damn, that is, that is terrible. I'm glad it'll be forgotten. But quick, we have to go 3,000 years more into the future, as this place is about to blow! Phew, we made it into the Amazon rainforest. Oh wait, I forgot. Welcome to the Sahara, Kyle. Yes, your tiny brain probably can't comprehend this, but in 13,000 years, the Sahara will actually be green instead of a dry desert. Let me explain. When you think of the Sahara, you picture endless sand dunes, outrageous heat, and a desert that seems eternally filled with the bones of lost wanderers. So how could it ever come alive? Well, thanks to the Earth's precession. What does that mean? That's the slow wobble of Earth's axis, a weird circular motion like this that occurs every 26,000 years as it and the moon orbit the sun. Because of this, the African monsoons move northward, flooding the desert with rain. The transformation will be astonishing. Sand dunes will give way to lovely grasslands. Lakes will fill ancient holes where lakes used to be before. Yeah. And rivers will carve their way across what is now barren rock. Elephants, giraffes, and countless other species will return to a land that once supported them, just as they did the last time the Sahara was green. And I was there over 6,000 years ago. That's right, Kyle. Human ancestors painted giraffes and crocodiles on the walls of caves there, proof that the desert was once alive. That means ancient Egyptians didn't simply exist in a sandpit, and that you've been lied to your whole life. It's only been a tourist destination for sand dunes for the last 4,500 years or so. But the viewers at home, unfortunately, won't see it return to glory. Unless they subscribe. If they do that, then who knows? I might show up with my time machine in their bedroom next. Which reminds me. We need to travel 100,000 years into the future again. Yes, welcome to the far future, Kyle, where we have flying cars, AI girlfriends, and apparently still sh navigation systems. Why is it not working? Oh, right, I forgot. Earth flipped its magnetic field. Yeah, every few hundred thousand years, north becomes south, and south becomes north. It's not instant, though. The process unfolds over thousands of years, but the effects on our civilization would be dramatic. Our magnetic field is a shield deflecting deadly radiation from the sun. And during a reversal, that shield weakens. Satellites would glitch, global navigation would falter, and massive solar storms could pour straight into our atmosphere, frying power grids and leaving entire continents in the dark. 
The last full reversal happened 780,000 years ago, and on average, they occur every 300,000 years. By that math, we're overdue. Scientists can already see signs of the field weakening, with this so-called South Atlantic anomaly growing larger every year. When the next flip happens, Earth will be more vulnerable than ever. Hold on, where the f*** did you get that AI girlfriend from? You weirdo, leave her behind, Kyle. She'll never fill the empty void in your lightless, depressing soul. That's what I'm here for. It's time to go one million years into the future. Wait, what's that in the sky? Are those fireworks? Well, it depends on how you look at it. What you see right there are comets. So many comets, and they're all coming for us. Roughly 1.3 million years from now, when you woke up this morning, the night will be dominated by another star, one called Gliese 710. This small orange dwarf, about 0.6 times the sun's mass, is racing towards us and will pass within just 0.06 light years of Earth. That's uncomfortably close for stars. So close that it'll be as bright as Venus and Jupiter in those beautiful night skies. Also, it'll pass close enough to plow straight through the old cloud, the icy shell of comets that surrounds a solar system up to perhaps 100,000 AU. The disturbance, though, will send an absolute cascade of comets tumbling inward towards the inner planets, some of them possibly on collision courses with Earth. For millions of years afterward, the solar system will be showered in fire and ice. Imagine skies lit with streaks of incoming comets, oceans boiling with impacts, and entire ecosystems collapsing under constant bombardment. If humanity is still around, this event could either be our doom or the ultimate fireworks show to record on your Neuralink brain implant. But if simply seeing a freaking star pass this close to our solar system isn't enough for you, what about an actual, full-blown, and incredible supernova? Fortunately, we don't have to travel into the future for that. We can stay right here to observe the Betelgeuse supernova. Indeed, sometime within the next million years, one of the brightest stars in our sky will go out in one of the most spectacular ways possible. Betelgeuse, the massive red giant we can see from Earth, is at the end of its life. It's only about 14 to 20 times the mass of the Sun, but 700 times larger in radius. And it behaves so weirdly that many models have it looking like this, which kind of looks like that one infected wart you have on your back, Kyle. Yikes. However, when the star finally runs out of fuel, gravity will collapse its core in seconds, triggering a supernova. The explosion will shine brighter than the full moon for months, visible even in the middle of the day. Scientists believe Betelgeuse could blow tomorrow, or a million years from now. Either way, it'll be simply lovely. You know what isn't simply lovely? Moons trying to murder their planets. I know. I'll explain when we get there. First, it's time to travel another 40 million years into the future. Yes, Kyle, we're in space now, and if you look to your right, you can see an interstellar homicide about to happen. Mars doesn't have the majestic rings of Saturn, but in about 40 million years, it will. Maybe. Its closest moon, Phobos, is slowly spiraling inward as it tries to get up to shenanigans. But Mars's tidal forces will simply rip it apart. And eventually, the stress will exceed what the little moon can handle. Phobos will shatter into a stream of rock debris that spreads into a brand new ring system around Mars. For a time, the red planet will wear icy rings that rival Saturn's in beauty, glowing in the sunlight above the barren Martian deserts. Imagine standing on the Martian surface, Kyle. Imagine! Look up at the arcs of silver encircling the sky. But this is unfortunately a sight no other human watching right now will ever be able to see. So count yourself lucky, Kyle. What's that? Saturn's rings will always be more beautiful than these new ones from Mars? Oh, really, Kyle? I disagree. Also, because I have a funny story about that. One that I'll tell in a hundred million years. All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a Saturn, one of the most stunning objects in the solar system. Its beautiful, sparkling rings stretched hundreds of thousands of kilometers wide. But then, something happened. The rings slowly fell. Every second, about 10 tons of ice rained down into Saturn's atmosphere. Ring rain is what they called it. Over the next hundred million years, this drizzle drained the planet's most iconic feature. Until Saturn was completely stripped naked, the rings were no more. Yes, Kyle, what you see now is a night sky without the shiny crowns of rings that inspired humans for thousands of years. Future civilizations, if any exist, will look up at a bland, pale gas giant and never know what they miss. 
You just happen to live in a rare moment where Saturn wards jewelry with pride. Now, it's pathetic. Anyway, let's smash some continents together. Yeah, welcome to the year 250 million. And what we're about to see here is the world's largest bumper car ride. See, Earth's continents are constantly drifting, carried by plate tectonics. When you woke up, you lived in Arkansas, USA. Now, the tectonic plates are going to hold every continent back together again into one giant landmass, a supercontinent, including Arkansas. And in 250 million years, the next one should rise. Pangea Ultima. The Americas will slam into Africa, Africa will crush into Europe and Asia, and Australia will be shoved into everyone else. New Zealand just laughs at the show. Those crazy Kiwis just survive everything. The collisions will thrust up vast mountain ranges, maybe even taller than the Himalayas. But the real danger comes from the climate. As the continents merge, volcanic activity will spike insane amounts, pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The interior of the supercontinent will turn into an absolute furnace of hell. The average temperatures on the surface soar to 40 to 50 degrees Celsius with brutal humidity and bad hair days, creating conditions lethal to most mammals. Earth's diversity will collapse into coastal refugees, and life will struggle to survive in the scorching heat of the new Pangaea. Until the plate tectonics stop altogether 1.5 billion years, and we turn into the new Mars. Yep, I'm sorry I just spoiled that ending, so we no longer have to travel to that point in time. However, what we will do is travel to the year 650 million, because it's time to look at the last solar eclipse we will ever see. You see, Kyle, the moon isn't locked in place. Every year it drifts about 3.8 centimeters farther from Earth. As the moon tugs on the Earth's oceans, it slows our planet's rotations just a tiny bit. And to conserve what's called angular momentum, the moon inches away. The effect is invisible day to day, but over geological timescales it changes everything. In about 650 million years, the moon will be too far to perfectly cover the sun in the sky as it does now. That means the last total solar eclipse will happen. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, enough looking. Fast forward 4.5 billion years and the moon will have drifted so far that Earth's days will be 43 hours long instead of 24. Think about that. The rhythm of day and night, the cycle that governs life itself, stretches almost twice as long. Humanity will never see it, and if we did, you know damn well those quadrillionaires will be making you work 39 out of the 43 hours without sleep, or pay time off, or any holidays, or Christmas. Maybe that's better. I hate it when grandma drinks too much. Our calendars, our culture, even our biology are tuned to the 24-hour day. So, you know, society will be doomed and stuff. If you still exist. Unlikely, <laughs> though. But that's not all. Because stars like our sun don't just quietly fizzle out, they go through an epic, fiery midlife crisis. In about 5 billion years, the sun will exhaust its core hydrogen, forcing it to burn helium instead. When that happens, the sun's outer layers will expand outward, ballooning to more than a hundred times its current size. That's bad news for Mercury and Venus, which will be roasted like marshmallows, and almost certainly for Earth too, as we'll either be engulfed directly or baked to death in the expanding solar atmosphere. At this stage, the sun won't just be bright, it'll be an enormous bloated red orb dominating our skies. The oceans will already have been long gone from the runaway greenhouse effect, and now even the rocks will start to melt. So metal. After roughly a billion years of this butt-cracking sweaty nightmare, the sun will shed its outer layers into space, creating a glowing planetary nebula of hydrogen clouds, while the core collapses into a white dwarf about the size of Earth. That extreme object will shine weakly for trillions of years before fading into darkness. But even that is not the end. It's time for our final time travel. Activate Overdrive, destination 100 billion years into the future. Yes, Kyle, we're once again in space, but there's nothing here. Not even the cosmic microwave background. One of the greatest discoveries in science. The faint afterglow of the Big Bang itself. It's basically the universe's baby picture, taken when it was just 380,000 years old. But here's the catch. The universe is expanding, and it never stops. Fast forward another 100 billion years, and the expansion will have redshifted with the cosmic microwave background so much that even if alien astronomers built a telescope the size of the entire solar system, they wouldn't be able to detect it. To them, the Big Bang never happened. 
the universe would look eternal, static, and empty of origin stories. That's the real threat of the universe expanding and life only existing after a certain point. Not only will we miss the cosmic microwave background, but future civilizations will miss the proof that the universe ever had a beginning at all. <laughs> what, are, what are they gonna think, that the universe is inside a black hole or something? <laughs> oh man, then what? They're gonna think everything is a big freeze? That the last thing to happen in the universe is... Wait, what the f*** is that? <laughs>